Hello world, hello everyone. It's uh, Shauna again with Disrupt Apps LLC. And today is another video I've wanted to make. And you're looking at uh, some graphics cards. This is all my graphics cards that I've owned, aside from my 1080 Ti that's uh, in my uh, desktop machine. And I figured, hey, why not uh, show some hardware prawn? <laughs> and uh, while I talk about something some of you may think is a pipe dream, but I think it can be done. And that's the fact that I think, um, I think it's time for us in the community, for those who've got the skills, to create an open source video card, an open source graphics card. And for those of us out there who understand, yeah, that's a big, uh, that's a big task. And for those who might be skeptical and, and scoff at it, at the idea, and, oh, that'll never happen, you can't do this and you can't do that. Well, with today's open source technology, um, with the access of all sorts of CAD programs out there and uh, community support and community collaboration, I think it's absolutely possible that a group of dedicated people could get together and create an open source graphics card. And uh, I think um, I read somewhere on the internet that some lone, uh, lone person out there built their own, um, they built their own graphics card from scratch and they did it as a passion project and it was one one guy and I'll have to do a post uh, production to find out the information. It's Shauna here in uh, post production and I'm getting to uh, the uh, graphics card that this individual made and it's called the Fury GPU and I am in no way associated with this project or this person but I just found it a few uh, few months ago or a year ago and I was like wow this is so cool why why aren't we doing this why aren't more people doing this and um, fully custom uh, GPU built from the ground up for modern computers and Fury GPU is a real hardware yada yada yada, yada. and uh, they've got a little thing here about running it and So yeah, it's running an old retro game, but uh, I believe this person built this thing from scratch on his own time. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. That is so cool that, you know, it's not some multi-billion dollar corporation that's making this thing. It's one person. And coming here to the person's website, we've got this. This is going to be above my head because I'm not, I'm not a hardware developer or anything like that. Um, but I have an idea of what's going on here, but I'm going to defer to other people for this kind of thing. And Fury GPU has been created by me. I am not him, but Dylan Barry. As a software engineer with over two decades of rendering experience under my belt, I've always been interested in the hardware that makes what I do for a living possible. Fury GPU is an attempt to really figure out the details and expand my understanding of digital design and what it takes to make something extraordinary complex as working as a working GPU that runs on modern machines. Two and a half years later and I have something that I can plug into a modern Windows machine, install drivers, and play on games. That is to say that this GPU is not is modern or has modern capabilities. It is at the moment fully fixed function with no programmable shading shaders to speak of. It runs off a custom Vulkan-like graphics API, Fury Geo, and due to the lack of shaders and other modern features, is unavailable to support modern D3D or Vulkan. Everything that runs on it has been ported to do so. While that is not a massive undertaking, it's not a trivial thing to do either. That being said, Fury GPU lives in a state of forever being a work in progress, and there are very and are very few things I decided are entirely off the table and just got some specs here and you know uh, again this is a uh, this is someone doing it as a, as a passion project and we'll come to this blog page of, of his and uh, you know hello and there it is and it's all its glory I mean you know I'll put the links to this uh, person's blog but you, you can read through it and this was just one person working in their spare time now imagine, imagine if we had, you know, people 
who were like at this level, who were doing this on their spare time and like had pulled the re resources and like if people got together in the community and like crowdfunded these people and even if they just put their own money into it, they could really build some cool stuff and they could put the screws onto like NVIDIA and AMD and Intel and say, hey, start making better stuff, start listening to the gamers out here and uh, people who need graphics cards, you know, stop, you know, stop kowtowing to AI and, and crypto mining crap and get back to the core of what your companies were founded on. Anyways, I'm kind of uh, going off on a tangent there, but so looking on uh, on the internet, I found this company called PCB Way, and I've I've seen advertisements on YouTube for it before, and uh, I worked in uh, hardware and software testing, and I did logic board testing, and I heard the uh, hardware developers talking about this company. So, so you've got this website here, and you can come in here and make PCB boards, and like I said, I'm out of my swim lane here, but uh, those of you people who are into like hardware design and embedded systems and things like that, you guys and gals are going to know more about this than I would, but what is the possibility of like 20 people out there who are really good with this stuff and are passionate about this and who want to do an open source project, you know, pull the resources together and come in here and build a, a PCB and... and you know, I just plugged in some random numbers like size and quantity and layers, and that's going to be on someone else's, you know, agenda to figure this stuff out. Because I'm, I'm a layperson when it comes to the hardware side of things and, and that. But the thing is, we can do this. It can happen because we've got things like PCB way that can make these uh, boards. And when I worked in uh, software QA here locally in, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, there was a PCB board uh, manufacturer, uh, I think Carrollton or something, and they could build, they they could build the PC board PCB boards like right there locally. So I mean, you can do it over the internet or you can do it locally. You just have to find the company who will work with you, and you know work with such a low volume, or low scale volume at, to start off with. But just with this dinky thing here, it's like twenty nine dollars for, you know five quantity of five uh, PCB boards and of course you got to buy like all the capacitors and all, all the transistors and and uh, things and voltage regulators and all that kind of stuff but looking here you know you've you've you, they've you can buy it looks like you can get you know the uh, uh, PCIe interfaces right and again I'm out of my swim lane here and I'm going to defer to people who have expertise in in this field thinking about how Linux has worked. Why can't the same principles be applied to doing a, uh, to doing a graphics card? And I may, I may be displaying my ignorance here, but hey, that's fine. I want to know. Why, why can't we do it? Why aren't we doing this? But uh, yeah, the, the guy built it on his own time. He was a hardware engineer, I think, and a programmer. And uh, it, I mean, it wasn't anything spectacular, but it could run like Doom. And just think if we had if we had a team of dedicated people like people work on the Linux uh, the Linux systems and the Linux OS distribution flavors what if we had people out there who were actually dedicated to working on a graphics card that's an open source graphics card I'm making this video because I hear a lot of people on the internets and all the popular uh, tech YouTube channels saying Oh, NVIDIA this and AMD that and it sucks and it's so expensive. Well, you know what? You know who we have to blame for that? It's the crypto miners. Because when the pandemic rolled around and people went crazy with crypto, you know, they snatched up all the graphics cards. And that made the uh, all the uh, graphics cards designers like NVIDIA and uh, AMD, hey, we can, squeeze the, we can squeeze the community and make a hell of a lot of money off of this thing, right? And so, you know, the whole crypto thing put it in their heads, and now that's their business model. They can squeeze more and more off of people with, uh, with their, their uh, pocketbooks, with their graphics cards. And then what are we stuck with? We're stuck with, uh, we're stuck with the duopoly of NVIDIA and AMD. And then who else is to blame is this AI crap, because now uh, NVIDIA is heavily involved in artificial intelligence. They're putting all their money into that, and they're like, so what? Who cares about the gamers? You know, we're, we're so invested in, in AI and 
chasing a billion dollar here and billion dollar there. So we did it to ourselves. What are we going to do? Live with a duopoly? And that's why I was thinking, hey, why not give it a shot? Personally, I don't have the skills to develop hardware and to do uh, the uh, embedded software programming. That is not my area of expertise, and I do not want to get in that area. I've got other things I'm, I'm doing. But what I think would be great, and what would be so good and beneficial to like humanity and gamers and, and people who are tired of the price gouging is an open source video graphics card project. Because people can get in there, those those people who are really good with hardware designs and doing logic uh, circuit boards and all that good stuff, they could get in there and work together and create some really good stuff. And from my knowledge, you can work online with uh, PCB board manufacturers and you can source the components. So, you know, the the limitations aren't there. It's it's just that people have to get the idea and 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 do it. And, you know, I might be swimming out of my lane a little bit, and I'll admit to that, but hey, why not? What do we have to lose? And if people get out there and and start doing an open source community video card project and make something cool and competitive with what NVIDIA and uh, AMD and what Intel is doing, that'll force their hand. That'll, that can say, hey, we, are the, we in the community out here who've got the tech skills to make it happen, can tell NVIDIA and AMD, say, hey, quit these shady business practices, stop price gouging us, pay attention to your customer base, make it affordable again, or else we're going to build our own, we're going to build our own cards, and that'll force their hand. And who knows, with, you know, these uh, hardware engineers who are really good at this stuff and programmers, they could build some really awesome stuff and not be limi limited by corporate bureaucracy and their design ideas, and they could really create some cool innovation out there. I just wanted to get that off my chest and, and put it out there and let the, let the community run with it. I, I don't care. I just want to get it out there and say, hey, why aren't we mobilizing and, and making our open, open source graphics card? Why not? Well, with that, I'll go ahead and show you some of my video graphics card collection. And this is an old ancient I think I had to look it up and look at the serial number here on the back, and it was a 2400 Pro, and I salvaged this pile out of a bunch of old Dells that I bought a few years ago, and this was my very first really good graphics card. It's a 2600 XT, and, you know, it's, it's ancient by today's standards, and unfortunately this doesn't work anymore. I try to make it work, and it probably could be repaired, but I don't have, you know, the diagnostic tools and the soldering and, and, and stuff like that to to resurrect it, but it's still cool to have, you know, I still hang on to it, and uh, yeah. And here you're looking at some other cards that I've picked up over the uh, the ages, and this is my first really good graphics card that I ever bought, and it's, uh, it's a GeForce 770, and I was not making a whole lot of money at the time, so I saved up for a couple months and built a really good system while I was uh, living in Japan, and you can see there it's from soft map and I bought that in Akihabara in uh, Tokyo and you can see here you've got the you've got the uh, you know the specs on it and it's written in Japanese so I'll do a quick opening of it and uh, I'm one of those people who likes to keep other boxes and stuff like that so I keep everything in, in good order and you know I still got all the stuff like that all the additional things in there and yep there it is it's in really good shape I haven't really you know I used it for a while and then uh, I uh, moved on to a better computer this was my first decent card and I bought that from Tsukumo in Akihabara and I actually bought this a few months uh, ahead of time before I bought that 770. And that 770 was actually on sale. It was sitting in a glass case on the on the discount rack and uh, yeah, and I bought it because it was on sale for a good price. And it was a good card at the time. And here you're looking at my an MSI R7. So I've done both AMD and uh, Nvidia. And that one was pretty good. I had no problems with it. You know, I was just using desktop stuff like that and Actually, the fan broke on it right here. You can see the 
the fan blade broke, so I got a replacement and I actually replaced it uh, on my own. Uh, I was looking for this thing. This is my very first good SSD. I, I'm, I was looking for this thing and I couldn't find it. And this was back in the day when like Raptors, the Western Digital Raptors were the thing. And when these things came out, these were awesome. And I think I, yeah, this, yeah, I'm so glad I found this. I'm happy. I know it's ancient and it's pointless to have in this day and age, but this is so cool because of the, the nostalgia. So that was a nice find. And then, uh, let's see here. And I've got a 750 Ti that I ran for a while. And it's nice packaging and um, I used it for a while. And I actually was, a long time ago I was wanting to start a company and what I was wanting to do is take old Dells. This is probably like back in 2016. And, and what, I, my, what my thinking was, was to take old Dells and other people have done this on the internet is take old Dells and put decent graphics cards in for like a really budget PC. And in the same vein of that, you know, I have the EVGA GT730, which, yeah, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but, you know, it'll get the job done to play old games and things like that. And, again, my whole, my whole thing of it was to take it like that small form factor and put it in one of these old... Dells, which I showed in one of my videos. So, and then of course I've got my, and then of course I've got the, the GOAT, the 1080 Ti, and I, I still have the box and everything in it, and I know it's just a box, but hey, boxes are cool, and again, it's over there in my, uh, it's over there in my, uh, desktop over there that's running Mint and, uh, Windows 7 Dual Boot. So with that, I just wanted to uh, show uh, my graphics card collection. I mean, some of it is ancient and useless, but it's pretty cool to have. But I just also wanted to say, hey, why aren't we getting together? Why aren't we? Why aren't you people who are really good with hardware design and, and software with uh, embedded programming and, and graphics kind of stuff? Why aren't we building an open source graphics card? Why not? Force their hand. Let's do it.